Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brian Baptist Church for this, our festive uh, morning service. Of course, one of our many services in the month of December, that is uh, holiday season service. And I look forward to this service. It's a wonderful Christmas service. Now, I'll be honest with you, I look forward to Christmas Eve even more. We don't usually get to have a service on Christmas Eve. It's very rare. And so, but we're glad you're here today. And we hope you're ready to sing out loud. Please uh, find your songbooks. Brother Jim Grew is going to tell you uh, the Christmas song we're going to sing right now. All right, 138, 138, all standing if you can, please. Oh, come all ye faithful, 138. certainly is worthy of our adoration and he's worthy of our praise. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have Christmas. By the way, we also wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Easter either. Wouldn't have Resurrection Sunday. There's so many things that we would not have without Jesus. The most important being, we wouldn't have eternal life. Right. And how important it is. Everything focuses on God's plan being put specifically into action on Christmas Day. And this is what we come to celebrate, and this is what we come to honor. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on the service this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come because we're thankful to you. We're thankful that you love us, and uh, we don't say this lightly, because so many people will use love as such a light word, but you proved it. Uh, you commended your own love. We saw that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son to die for us. And we thank you for loving your creation so much that you gave us a path to eternal life. And I pray now that you would use this time to draw us to yourself, uh, that we would not... Uh, miss it, that we would not be distracted uh, from the great help that you want to be to each one of us. And we pray that that help would be realized this morning. 
And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. choir thank you for that let's stand as we sing our greeting hymn this morning number 144 silent night 144 we'll sing the first verse and as we usually do we'll shake hands with people welcome to our church services let them know that we care and then we'll come back and sing the last number 144 silent night.
you very much, Brother Jim. Good to see each and every one of you here today. It's been a very, very busy morning already. Again, my thank you uh, to the children and the teenagers and the adults uh, who all worked very, very hard to participate in the Christmas program this morning. We wish there was a way that we could move, move the set pieces around faster. You know, now I've seen it done in the big theatric productions. They actually have them drop out of the ceiling. So maybe what we need is just some big pulley system and, you know, have the manger come down, you know, have uh, the star come down, have the people come down, have the piano come down. Yeah, there's a lot of things maybe won't be too good about that. But anyway, we do thank them for all their hard work. Uh, now, for those of you who are cookie coveters, I'm sorry, the cookie store is now closed. And so anyway, we hope you got enough in between services. But I'm going to make a special announcement. Just before Sunday night service, the cookie store will be open again. And so anyway, just letting you know. And of course, we're going to have a wonderful service tonight. Hey, Dave, can we wheel deal five o'clock for choir today? Five o'clock? Yeah, five o'clock though? Five o'clock, okay. I just saw, you saw negotiating going on there, okay? The money will change hands later. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, negotiating that five o'clock choir rehearsal today, and uh, we're so glad to have you. Is there anybody, and you need the bulletin of the month? You need the green, you need the green bulletin of the month, and uh, Jackson, Jackson needs one here. Anybody else, uh, you do not have green, because green uh, will take care of you. Now, Andrew, is that your third bulletin? His second, he makes paper airplanes out of them. And so, uh, anyway, make sure you get that. Tim, we'll get you one too. Uh, Caleb's looking there, we'll make sure you get that. Just so you know what's going on uh, the rest of the season, and there's still really plenty uh, of items going on. And so we're so very, very excited uh, about that as well. Uh, let me make mention of this. If you do not have the newest church directory, um, you can get those. Uh, ushers, would you hold those up? Uh, newest church directory, somebody may want one of those. Uh, these just came hot off the press about two, three weeks ago. And if for some reason your name's in there, don't feel bad about it. It just means we didn't get a directory card, and, but uh, we can get you in on the next one. Anybody need one of these? Just looking, anyone needing one? I think we're okay. Uh, right at the moment. Also, this is the perfect time of year to pass out gospel tracks, and we have plenty of them. Uh, we have reloaded uh, the track rack. There are five different uh, Christmas tracks from Chick Publications, and you can take those and you can give those to your friends, uh, you can give those to your neighbors, and give those to your classmates. You guys have one more week of school, a little less than a week. Give them to your classmates. By the way, legally you can do that. Uh, you can give them to your you can give them to your enemies. You really can give them to your enemies. Give them to your frenemies. Uh, but either way, you know who knows? You give them to an enemy, they receive Christ. They may become your friend. You just never know. But how important it is to get the gospel out at this time of year. And so we have plenty of those. Don't worry about this. We still do have about 250 invitation cards. And true, we can't invite anybody to the children's Christmas program or the Sunday school Christmas program because that is over, but there still is Christmas caroling that is on that card. Christmas caroling, uh, this is community Christmas caroling. You meet here at the church at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday. We load the shuttle. If we need more, we'll have a chase vehicle, and we're going to, we're going to Christmas carol at two of our care facilities, I'll be Christmas caroling at Mackay Creek first, then going to Subtle Care. Then we come back here and we Christmas carol around the neighborhood. And even though it's dark outside, we have these nice little LED candles you can see and you can read our Christmas caroling card. And we have just a wonderful, wonderful time uh, doing that. And uh, then we also have refreshments afterward in the fellowship hall. So just encourage you to come for that. I think you'll enjoy that, that is marvelous. Interesting but true story, Brother Carl uh, put one of these invitation cards on a house and the occupant of the house chased him down. And um, just to double check on Christmas caroling and to say, can I come and can I bring a friend? Literally, that happened yesterday. And so you know, this is the time of year, it's a wonderful uh, time of the year. I did not borrow that from anybody. 
Uh, if I said the most wonderful time of the year, then I would have borrowed that from somebody. Uh, but anyway, just letting you know about these things going on, we do have our care center ministry still this week. Uh, we do have uh, Subtle Care at 3.30. Uh, we do have Mackay, that's Tuesday, Thursday, Mackay Creek at 1245. Uh, looking into this, men will still have men's prayer on the 23rd. Next Sunday is, uh, is Christmas Eve. Oh, man alive, it's Jesus' birthday. We need to shut down for Jesus' birthday. What? No, we're open. Christmas Eve, we're open. We will not have the Sunday school hour next Sunday, but 11 o'clock, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful morning service, a wonderful festive service. You can come and wish each other Merry Christmas. Then on Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we have a very, very special service. It's our Christmas Eve service, and um, it is uh, special music, instrumental, vocal, poetry, Christmas carols, scripture readings, and everything just clicks. It is a 45-minute service, but you will be amazed how much goes into that one 45-minute service, and we get a wish each other Merry Christmas again. Now, we do this. We literally, we give you, we give you LED candles where you can do Christmas caroling, or we give you the live ones. Yes, the one time a year, we trust you, the adult, with a live candle. We have only caught the carpet on fire once in 10 years. So we're okay. Uh, our fire marshal didn't hear that. And uh, that's why I learned the beauty of a one-hour candle and discover you cannot use them again. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. I encourage you to do that. Then on New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve night, we will have men's preaching. And then we will go into fellowship. This is when you can bring all your Christmas leftovers. Uh, right after the men's preaching. And then we have a white elephant gift exchange. Um, you, something that you find and you package up and you use for a gift exchange. It, it can be something tastefully humorous. It can be something useful. Please don't wrap a rock. Okay, we have plenty of those. You know, make sure it's something helpful and useful and, uh, and we can have a good time. I heard that. Don't don't do that. So anyway, uh, we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. So just looking forward to this. Also, Christmas Eve, we have our, our missionary love offering. This is an annual offering, and it, very often it's for one of our supported missionaries. This year is a little bit different. Uh, many of you know that uh, uh, Brother R. B. Olette, who's a friend of our congregation, was a pastor for many, many years, traveling evangelist, that he got cancer of his larynx and had to have his voice box removed. And so he is healing. They did put in, I don't know how they did, they put it in a prosthetic voice box. He texted me this morning and says, I get to try it out for the first time on Thursday. And so we'll see what happens with that. But as you can imagine, he is not, he is not uh, bringing home the bacon right now. He can't even eat bacon right now. It's applesauce and yogurt and things like that. But we want to be a help to him, so we're taking a special love offering for him on the 31st of December. So just want you to know that's happening. Also, thank you for your, uh, just your love for the church. Thank you for giving faithfully to missions and for the building ministry. Uh, we do have a new project in the works. We're looking to light the steeple first part of next year. We're looking to light that. And uh, then, you know, sometimes people don't even know there's a church here in the neighborhood uh, because they can't see it. Well, we're going to help them out a little bit with that. So, so let's have uh, the men come forward to receive our Sunday morning offering. And again, uh, Children's Christmas Program, I do want to say thank you to my wife. She, some of you have worked hard for a few weeks. She's worked hard for months. And, uh, and she, will, she will sleep tonight. She will. She will sleep tonight, but it's been a while since she's been able to do that. She's been working hard. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate her. I appreciate all the children. I appreciate our Sunday school teachers and our children's workers. Thank you for loving people. I don't think there's a more important thing that can take place uh, than loving people as Christ loved us. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Ask God's blessing on the offering. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Paul Rowe. Paul, would you bless the offering, please?
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with a humble heart, with a heart filled with desires to please you, Lord. Lord, you blessed us with eternal salvation, sending your Son to die for our sins. And Lord, we give to thee with a loving heart. We give to thee to see your word prosper, to see the missionaries placed in the field, and Lord, the laborers into the harvest. Lord, this morning, do we give thanks and praise and honor and glory to you. And may it show in our giving, mm -hmm. for we give with a loving heart, a heart that wants to see you prosper and glorified, high and lifted up in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Dave and Mrs. Watkins for that. Appreciate that. Let's uh, stand, if you can, please, just before the message, number 491, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. 491.
wonderful singing, and I hope that uh, Christmas music is, you know, part of your life during this season. Good, uh, wholesome music. Um, um, I'm not. I'm not suggesting Jingle Bell Rock. That is not what I'm suggesting. But I mean, there are some just some beautiful music about the birth of our Savior. And uh, we have a lot, literally. We probably have something like 50 different music CDs. Uh, we do not listen to all of them the same time. Sometimes we can't listen to all of them the same year. Uh, but it's wonderful, and it fills the home, and it's festive, and it's a wonderful time. And it really is in my heart uh, that you are able to have a, a wonderful Christmas holiday that God does something to make it very, very special uh, for you this year uh, because he is special and the Savior is special. So please turn in your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 8. We're looking in Romans chapter 8. Uh, you may be a little bit surprised by the passage because if you know your way around the Bible, you go, uh, this is not where I expected the Christmas passage to come from today. Uh, but God has put something on on my heart uh, because Jesus cares about us and loves us in so many different areas and I want you to know that whatever you are going through at this time of year I want you to know God loves you and he cares about you and he wants to draw you to himself Romans chapter 8 looking at verse 18 the Bible says this for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is making an evaluation. He says, I reckon. He says, I'm evaluating the good and the bad and the pros and cons. And this is what I've come up with. No matter how bad things are here, it'll be completely, utterly eclipsed by how wonderful things are going to be up there. That's a wonderful thing to know. He continues on. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. This next verse is very important. I will be circling back to this verse in a little while. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature sh itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now I'm going to read one more verse and then we will have a word of prayer this verse is out of Hebrews chapter 2 looking in verse 9 and the word of God says this but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help me to be your mouthpiece today. Your word is clearly written. It is my desire that it be clearly spoken. Because I can speak to minds, but you can speak to hearts. And I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, that that's exactly what you would do today. Because we need a truth that will penetrate our hearts today. And you right now in this room know everything that everybody is going through in their lives. So I pray that you would use your word to touch every heart. By the miracle of yourself and what the love of your son has done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm thinking back on a, a verse that we just read. To live on earth 
is to acknowledge the existence of pain. And the scripture is quite clear about this pain. As we already read in verse 22 of Romans 8, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. It was Jesus himself that said, In this world ye shall have tribulation. We live here on planet earth, and to be on planet earth is to know pain. Now, for some of you, you go, I know that, Pastor. I'm experiencing pain right now. I've been sitting in this hard bench for just a little while, and I'm experiencing pain. Okay? I forgot to go to the back. I forgot to grab the blue cushion. I am now in pain. But, and we all can understand pain on the outside. Um, I never listen to a teenager much when they say, I'm in pain, because I go, hey, guys, you don't know pain yet. It's coming. It's coming. There are certain experiences that you will enjoy when your hair gets to be my color. And I hope for your sake that your hair can become my color and you can keep yours because I'm losing mine. So, but as we look at this here, I want you to understand, it says, we all travail in pain together. And here's what it means. We all hurt. And there is with pain a brokenness in life. It's one thing to hurt. It's another thing to be broken. Some of you here knows what it is to hurt inside. The majority of you here actually know what it is to be broken inside. In Romans chapter 8 verse 20 it says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. And here's what that means. We are placed into this broken world. This world is broken due to sin. This world is broken due to corruption. And we are born into this world. We are placed into this world. Under a cloud of pain. Under a cloud of brokenness under a cloud of emptiness, except now, at Christmas, where we are placed under a ray of hope. Because we always have to read the rest of the verse, and it says, the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. There is a ray of hope, and hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And we have hope through him. Now, the scripture is quite clear on him, as we read uh, just before the prayer. And that again in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, where it again says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. But why was he made? Wow. Just like us who were born in this earth, we were born and we know suffering. And Jesus was given a body on earth for one primary reason, and that was to suffer, to be broken. So while our pain seems to have no purpose, his pain had a purpose. And his purpose was and is you and me. And if there is a Savior who cares for you now, then there is hope for the broken at Christmas time. And I want to speak on this subject this morning. I'm going to speak on three things, three things that are a brokenness that we either can or do experience, but God has given hope, and he's given hope through his Savior. First of all is this, there is hope for those with a broken spirit. I'm going to have you turn to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2, and after you turn to Isaiah chapter 9, I'm going to have you stay there for a little bit, because I'm going to read a couple different passages there. 
But I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 9. And Isaiah chapter 9 is an amazing passage of prophecy. Some of it near fulfillment, some of it being fulfilled, some of it continually fulfilled. And I, I want to, you to understand that there is hope for those that are broken, that have a broken spirit. First of all, those that are broken by an oppressed life. And you may go, well, what does oppressed life mean? It means a point or a period of time in your life where you're oppressed. Here's another word. You'll get this one, victimized. Oppressed or victimized. The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Here's an amazing thing. We look at the book of Israel, we look at the nation of Israel, we look at the location of Israel, and Abraham was told it was a land flowing with milk and honey, it was a land flowing with blessing, but that same land in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 is called the shadow of death. And those at the time when Jesus came to earth, they understood exactly what that meant. They understood what it meant to, to literally be victimized. And in fact, we even have some of that victimization that took place. I know you'll, you'll understand this if I say that part of victimization is taxation. Do you understand that part? You understand that part. And that was part of, for Mary and Joseph, part of the victimization was taxation. Here they were in a land that was supposed to be a land of blessing, but for them it was the land of the shadow of death. And the thing is, is sometimes you feel that shadow in your own life. You feel oppressed. You feel victimized. You feel taken advantage of. You feel hurt. You have given, and maybe you gave good and got evil in return, something like that. And it's important to know there's hope for somebody that has a broken spirit. First of all, let me say this to you. When you are broken, God is in close proximity. The Bible says in, in uh, Psalm 34, looking at verse 18, it says, The Lord is nigh, it means the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. It is so amazing that a lot of people believe that when they're hurting the most, that God is the farthest away, and the opposite is true, is when you're hurting the most, God is the closest. That's where we got the poem. Many of you have seen the poem, Footprints in the Sand. And of course, we know the moral of footprints in the sand is there were two footprints, you and Jesus walking side by side, but when it goes to one footprint, it's not you walking alone, that's where Jesus is carrying you. And I want you to know that when you are broken and when you are oppressed and when your spirit just, you just cannot see up, I want you to know that God is very, very near to you. One is the Bible tells me so, but the reality is, is God cares dearly do you realize that david said to god you keep all my tears in your bottle that is closeness and that is care for somebody who's broken he sees your tears not only that jesus has compassion on your state and we're talking maybe 30 years past the advent of christ and we're talking about Jesus standing there in his ministry and just watching people. You know, I love to watch people because people are so interesting. Some people have character. Some have more character than others. And that is interesting to watch. Um, we were, I was at a, a Christmas party at Subtle Care and there was like a three-year-old boy and when he's leaving, he was waving at everybody as he's going and I said, after he left, I said, when that boy comes back, he's running for office. I mean, some people just have an amazing amount of character. But I'm here to tell you that God watches you. Jesus watches you and he has compassion on your state. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, looking at verse 36, it says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion upon them. And the term is because they fainted. I'm just going to use that term. And that meant they had a broken spirit. They had given up on life. 
They had said, not with their voices, they had said, in their hearts. What's the use? I've seen people when they're broken. And I've seen them where they, you know, they sometimes say, fake it when you make, till you make it, and they, they fake a smile. But they're crying inside. I've seen it. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus watches your heart. And Jesus watches your brokenness. And Jesus watches your heartache. There's hope for someone with a broken spirit. And if you're still in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, I really hope you're still there. You read chapter 2, but I want to point out to you, uh, not chapter 2, you read Isaiah 9, verse 2. I want to point out verse 6, where it says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And I'm here to tell you this, you have good news because a child has been born to you. A Savior has been born to you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And the good news is you have a Savior. You have somebody who cares about your brokenness and who has a long-term plan to save you from it. Understand there's hope for the broken at Christmas time. There's hope for those with a broken spirit. But there's also hope for those with broken relationships. Turn with me to Psalm 146. Psalm 146. I've watched people experience loss in their lives. And that really is a part of life here on planet Earth. On Wednesday, there's a wonderful church in our nation. A man who is visionary, a pastor of a church. And while you, God willing, are celebrating the Christmas holiday with your pastor, uh, they will not be celebrating their Christmas holiday with him because he's in heaven. And heaven is not a bad thing for the person in heaven. <laughs> it's less so for the person still on planet Earth. And they're feeling a sense. The people of that congregation right now, they're feeling a sense of physical loss. The Bible says this in Psalm 146 and looking at verse 1. Or um, let me, um, let me uh, look at this um, a little bit different here. So just give me one, one second here. One of the things that I want to point out here uh, with the Word of God is it says that, that God... is close to those. Who have lost a loved one. It talks about God being close to those that are the widows. Close to those that are the fatherless. And there are people like that. In fact it says in verse 9 of Psalm 146. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. And so I want you to know this. You know, God cares for those who have physically lost a loved one. Maybe a mother, it may be a father, it may be a brother, maybe a sister, uh, it may be a husband, harder yet, maybe a child. No parent should have to lose a child. There's a pastor we support as a church planter, a, a pastor and his wife. Uh, they lost a, a daughter in their 40s just a couple weeks ago. I want you to know that God cares about that. And God cares about those with broken relationships. God also cares for those that have a broken family. And this is a very, very interesting passage found in the book of Matthew where Jesus had um, physical, earthly relatives uh, being uh, born of Mary, supernaturally so. 
But uh, they were outside. He was speaking and they were outside and they wanted to see him. Matthew chapter 10 verse 36. And, and uh, I want you to know and we will get back to this also. But I want to point out this verse before we do. And that is it says this. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. I'm here to say not every family has sweetness and love. Uh, not every family has uh, a wonderful time at the Christmas table or the Thanksgiving table. Sometimes the greatest challenge is just to see if you can get them to the Christmas table or the Thanksgiving table. But I'm here to say God cares for those with a broken family. God cares for those when you know your holiday is coming and you really wish that somebody would come but you kind of know in your heart they're not going to. I want to let you know that God cares about that. And some people go, well, yeah, I understand a broken home. A broken home is where people are divorced. Can I say this to you? You do not have to have experienced divorce to have experienced a broken home. You can experience a broken home at any time. But I'm here to n tell you that God cares about that. And in Matthew chapter 12, verse 47 we have Jesus talking with the people and it says in verse 47, Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. And then Jesus gives hope to those with a broken family. And here's what he says. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of the Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. It's important to understand this. Jesus can make a family for those who have no family. This is an important thing to understand. Some of us are without. But I'm here to say, Jesus created the church so that you can have a family. And Jesus created the church so that you could have brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ and mothers in Christ and daughters in Christ and children in the Lord. God created the family just for that because God has always known that there would be people that would be without and people that would be broken when that took place and this is an important thing to do and having said this I want you to understand Jesus died to bring you into his family as we read in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but it goes farther than that it says you know as we look and it said crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation both perfect through sufferings for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. What does that mean? We all belong to the same family. The sanctifier and the sanctified for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. If you are a child of God and you receive Christ, there is not a day in your life where Jesus says, boy, I wish that person wasn't part of my family. He's always grateful that you are part of his family because he loves you that much. He died to bring you into the family. And he came to adopt you. And in Rome, we've been reading in Romans chapter 8, and there's one more verse that uh, I want to read to you that is found in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 where it says this, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And think about Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and think about why is it worded this way? For unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, 
What's the next one? The everlasting father. The everlasting father when we get to that one. I want you to think about this. He came to adopt you forever. He's not your father for a moment in time. He came to be your everlasting father. And the good news is this. You have a savior. And this is why the Bible said, the angels said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. So it points to God and it points to earth. It says goodwill toward men. God's goodwill toward men. That's called the God of reconciliation. Who's reconciling you to him, wants to adopt you into his family. Because God knows even at a time like this, Christmas time, people can be broken. So there is hope for those with a broken spirit. And there's hope for those with broken relationships. And there is hope for those with a broken destiny. And if you look in scripture, you will see there are many, many people where their destinies were broken. I think of young Joseph who had 11 brothers that hated him. And Joseph had a dream and Joseph had a direction. And in his mind, he had a destiny. And then they took him and they threw him in a pit and then they sold him into slavery. And I'm sure that Joseph at that point, even though Joseph seems to be one of the most optimistic people I've ever seen on planet Earth, I believe that would hurt. And you would wonder what in the world is going to happen to me in the future. And it would seem to be like a broken destiny. I'm here to say that God cares about those people that have a broken destiny. In fact, as we look at the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36 again, one more time, and we finish this verse, where it says this, when Jesus, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. But then it went farther and said, and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And that idea is they had nowhere to go. They had no place to be. They had no destination. They didn't know what was going to happen to them in life. And I'm here to tell you, God cares for those who don't know where to turn. No, who believe... Those who really are wearing the t-shirt. I once saw this on, on a sign in a place of business and it said, I can only please one person a day. Today is not your day. Tomorrow is not looking good either. And you may be living that life where you go, it's today. Today is not my day. Tomorrow is not looking good either. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus came to give you a destiny. Jesus came. He wants to change your destiny from going nowhere to going somewhere. He wants to do that. And God cares for those who wind up on the wrong path, that wind up going the wrong direction. Any of you ever made a mistake in life? Any of you ever made a mistake when you were trying to get somewhere? At this point, all the women goes, no, I didn't. My husband made the mistake. He said, because real men don't need naps and real men don't need GPS. But the reality is, is many of us have taken a wrong turn in life. And the Bible says this in, in Psalm 25 and verse 8. It says, good and upright is the Lord. Look at this. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way? I thought God only cared about teaching the righteous. Now he cares about teaching all of us, including us sinners. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach in his way. God cares for those that are on the wrong path. How else do we know that? The verse in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God cares for those that are on the wrong path. And God can take a destiny that is headed for disaster and change it to being directed by Him. And God wants to give you a place of permanence. Have you thought about that? No, for those who have a broken destiny, God wants to give you a destiny that's permanent. 
That's why the Bible says, you know the verse, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can tell you something about the word everlasting. It means permanence. There's a place of permanence. And in this case, this is a destiny change from hell to heaven. How important that destiny is. And God wants to give you a path of purpose and maybe that's one of the hardest things to be in life and not have you know any sense of purpose any sense of meaning in life and I'm here to say the God that loves you where if you're broken by just every hope and dream that you have has been dashed over and over again God wants to give you a direction. God wants to give you a place of purpose. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. A destiny that will result in blessing in your life. And I can tell you, not all destinies result in blessing. Some of you wear the t-shirt, I got exactly what I wanted. I don't want it anymore. God can give you a place, a blessing. God has good news for those that are broken. The Bible has a word for good news. It's called the gospel, which is this. Jesus was made a savior for you. The Bible says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And as we also saw in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, that Jesus hasted death for every man. That includes you. To think that you were suffering in life and Jesus suffered with you and for you. He tasted death for every man. And you can be made alive in him. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, looking at verse 22, For as in Adam all die, by the way, we're all descendants of Adam here, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And the reason we can be made alive is, yeah, he tasted death for every man, but we serve a risen Savior. And so he's still alive to help and to guide your path. And we have the reality that he suffered. Why did he suffer? What did he suffer for? He suffered for your sins. He suffered for my sins. As the Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And why did he do all this? For sinful people. For broken people. He wants you to make sure that you have the greatest Christmas gift you can ever have. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He offers a personal gift that only you can receive. And I always picture it like this, you know, uh, very often in many homes there, there's a tree. And there's a gift under the tree. The wonderful thing about the gifts that are under the tree is none of them have price tags on them. That's helpful, that there's no price tag on the gift that is under the tree. The other thing that's wonderful usually about gifts under the tree is that they're free, okay? Now, I discovered um, growing up in a home with two other brothers that I could not open the gift that had somebody else's name on it. But I didn't have to worry because there was always a gift under that tree that actually had my name on it. 
God has always had a gift with your name on it. He always has. He always does. And this is the good news of, it's a personal gift. It's a gift to you. Some people think God is not personal. God is very personal. And he loves you in a very special and personal and wonderful way. So much so that he wants to be sure that you are adopted into his family. And that certificate of adoption is like a gift under the tree. But you can take it or leave it. If you leave it, it's left. It's not yours. Eternity is not yours. Because the gospel is good news that Jesus died for you and offers you a gift. But if you reject the gospel, and by the way, it's not called a gospel. It's called the gospel. If you reject that, there's no other good news to be had. And when I look around here and I look at you because I have the best seat of the house, I think you could all use a bit of good news. And the good news is, is no matter what your state is, God cares for you. And when it comes to eternity, God wants you with him. But if you've never made that choice, Christmas would be a great time to receive a Christmas gift from Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll have a word of prayer and it will extend an invitation. An invitation is an opportunity. An opportunity that we have to make decisions in our lives. Now perhaps you would say, Pastor, the good news for me right at this point in time in my life is I remember receiving that gift. I remember there was a day. You may not have it marked on your calendar, but you remember there was a day where you asked Jesus to be your Savior and you received his gift of salvation. You'll say, Pastor, I remember the day. And if that would be you, would you slip up your hand and say, I remember the day. I remember making that decision. Now, perhaps you would say, you may put your hand down, you say, Pastor, I've always believed God loves me, but I've never made a decision about it. You say, but I want to know. I want to know that I'm saved. I want to know that I have the gift of eternal life. Would you pray for me regarding that gift? You go, I don't know. Nobody else is looking. Just hand quick up and hand quick down. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Maybe you would say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I have been going through a time of brokenness. I have had a hard time in my spirit. I've had a hard time in my circumstance. I've had a hard time in my direction. I just, I just want to reach out to the Lord and have him help me with this. If that would be you, nobody looking, would you slip up your hand and say, I'm going through that period right now. God bless you. God bless you. People go, God bless you. You can go through this time at Christmas time. Nobody wants to admit it. Anybody else? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would use your word today and that you would help us. Help us to make choices for you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together and we're going to sing this song. It's number 160. 160. And sometimes when the hardness and the difficulty is greatest, this is what we need to do. We need to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Let's stand together as we get ready to <coughs> sing this song. But if you have a need, don't leave the need in the chair. You can bring that to an old-fashioned altar. You can talk to God. If you have a need that I can help, you can talk, pray to me. If you don't know your eternal destiny, please come to me and talk to me. Don't leave that behind as we sing right now. You come. Oh, so
Bible says, casting all your care on Him, for He careth for you. And it really does. There's some things in life we can, can't fix. I, I'm, I wear the t-shirt and things in life that can't be fixed. But there's a God who still cares and there's a God who still comforts. There's a God who still can make a difference. And sometimes when you have that unfixable problem, you just need to bring it to Him. And let Him fix it. And if it's something that's not going to be fixed, then just let Him fix your heart. 